Hello, everybody. Let me walk you through what has been uh, the episode seven of the Pew Football Podcast. And that's a little bit of a strange one. And I, I want to know what you think of it. Basically, I thought that people have, in the Anglo-Saxon world, they haven't heard Maradona talk. They've seen him play. They remember a lot about what he did as a player and a lot of what he's doing now as a manager and since he retired. Uh, of course, the Yasif Kapadia movie uh, has allowed us to hear a little bit more in, in, in English or, uh, you know, subtitled anyway, Maradona. But most of the time, I'm sure that uh, if you ask around, people haven't heard a lot conversation with, uh, with the Armando Maradona. And I met him in Jordan. It was an event that SoccerX organized, and we had a chat in pu with public. So we spoke for over an hour. And I had it on the, still is, in the YouTube channel in Spanish. And even if you put subtitles on it, it kind of loses a little bit. Um, so I thought, especially for the podcast world, how about if I translate the conversation I had with Maradona, most of it anyway, the important bits, and made it a podcast. But if I was going to do that, it had to be with a special voice. Somebody that when you hear it, you have to wonder, is this Maradona? Of course, no, it's not Maradona, it's somebody else because he's speaking in English, but that it shocks you and that it's got its own particular uh, qualities in itself. And I decided to give the role of Maradona to a female voice to somebody I work with, to Semra Hunter. And I've got the impression listening to it that it has worked because it kind of keeps you on your toes, keeps you um, uh, alerted to the, to the, to the things that uh, Semra stroke Maradona are saying. I'll give you a few examples. The first one I'm going to play is a, is a clip in which it shocked me to hear the kind of things that he had to do to play football. And it has to do with injecting things that most of the time he didn't know what they were. Some of the things that now are illegal, but at the time they were allowed. Basically, um, anti-inflammatories and painkillers and stuff like that. And you know now, we know now how dangerous that is. But in some um, occasions, it was him who actually encouraged that to happen. Like in this clip that you'll hear. It is a bit shocking, but it's worthwhile hearing. Game against Brazil in the 1990 World Cup, my foot was very swollen. And as the blood had coagulated the needle, it just wouldn't go in. So the doctor tried it, but it wouldn't go. Bilardo came in and he said, Okay, I'll have to put you on the bench. And I said, The bench? No, you go on the bench. I'm not going on it. Doctor, give me the needle. So I grabbed the needle and I swear on my grandson, who is the person I love most, that this is true. I put my ankle like so. And I just rammed it in and I said to the doctor, okay, now inject me. And I did it because I wanted to play that game, a game that Brazil should have won, but didn't know how to. And then we went down to our very last drop of blood. We hit them with a counterattack and Canidia, well, he scored and we went through. In fact, uh, there were occasions where they couldn't find where to inject it and he would just grab the, um, uh, the needle and boom, put a like this into his own body. Uh, shocking, but uh, but that's the kind of thing that he had to do to uh, to play. Uh, there, we, we spoke about everything. We spoke about the uh, the famous goal, and I'll show you a clip of it in a minute. I'll play a clip of it. Uh, we we spoke about um, what it means to for him to play for Argentina, and we spoke about Napoli as well. So let's hear uh, this clip of what he did when he arrived to Napoli, and uh, and how clearly he um, embraced leadership. And what he told the uh, directors at the club uh, that shocked them, but also allowed them to see that they had, uh, they were about to build a team led by a winner. At my presentation, there were 70,000 people. I was on the pitch for half an hour before going on holiday to Argentina. And when I returned, they promised me a fantastic team. And that fantastic team had nine signings and one punto. I'd had a meeting with Ferlaino where I asked him if he wasn't ashamed to have 80 to 90,000 fans every Sunday watching his team lose 2-0 to Juve, 3-1 to Milan. Now for Northerners, the trip down to Naples was a formality, win and leave. And this hurt me very much. And so he said to me, okay, pick. And I started to pick. 
Ranika, Kripa, the Napoli, Kareka, this one, another. And it was this team, I think, that won 5-3 on Juventus's ground. And it only finished with that scoreline because we put the brakes on. Comfy the man, obviously. As you know, or should know, or may know, I am writing a biography of Maradona. And I want to do it in a way in which uh, people that were around him have got a prominent role to play. So it is a little bit Maradona seen through their eyes. I haven't started writing it, so that's what I think I'm going to do. Let's see, uh, as I, I've got most of the information I need, this will be, I think, the last week in terms of doing interviews, and then I'll start writing from, from May. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a while to write it, uh, more than ever, in fact, so it's good that I start early. But there are so many things that have happened in his life. I want to write only about Maradona as a footballer, after that, it becomes a little bit complex and too, um, I'm less interested about it. It's his time as a footballer. There was so much happening in there. And of course, the game that took him from being a very good player, the best in the world, to be a legend, a myth even, um, was the game against England. And he talks here about the... By the way, Peter Reid was watching in the uh, this this conversation and, and we talk about the hand of God as well and um, in the podcast you have the, the whole uh, discussion of that game uh, but the clip I'm going to use here is one that actually uh, where he talks about the second goal the one that um, it's I was going to say more remembered for I think as re as remembered for but beautiful perhaps one of the most beautiful goals ever and, uh, and he talks about uh, having scored a similar goal uh, against England in Wembley no, sorry, not scored, but done a move very, very similar that his brother remembered uh, and uh, told him that if you do it again, you have to do this and that to be able to score it. So he involves his brother uh, in the relation to this uh, magnificent goal that we all remember. Well, my brother says to me, you had time to walk into the goal with the ball as well. And I said to him, I would like to have seen you there. Now, do you know how the English were coming at us? They were coming with airplanes. But at the moment when Fenwick touched me, I was cool enough to know that I wasn't going to pass to either Valdano or Burtaga. Fenwick, he touched me and I could no longer apply the brakes. Not then. I couldn't break. I was coming down at full pelt. And then I dummy Chilton and Chilton did something rather strange, crossing his arms and waving his hands almost across his face, almost as if he were a bit scared or he thought that I would kick him or I don't know. Peter said that he was out of control and that uh, was because I caught the ball on the outside and hit it three fingers in from the post. And that's how it was. It was just a beautiful goal. It was indeed. Uh, one of the many, many things that uh, Maradona did very, very well. Uh, or, you know, there was, there was incidents in which he shouldn't be so proud of. But all that is, is a magnificent story, really of somebody who was extraordinary, who knew it, and uh, who, as I said, became a legend as he, was a, as he was a player. That story will be told in book form, but before we get there, there is a full podcast, the Pure Football Podcast, that you can have a look at. And, uh, and you know, it is a bit of a bonus. We had six episodes to do in this uh, uh, second series, but we thought maybe an extra one and see how you react to it. Let me know your comments, subscribe, of course, to this channel if you haven't done it yet and subscribe please to the uh, uh, to the podcast we will be preparing a new series we are in the second one we're very proud of it i'm really happy with the way it's, com it's coming up and i've got a lot of other big names to join us in the next podcast meanwhile I'll speak to you later bye